If you chose all three, give yourself a pat on the back because all three are true. Reasoning is really important for jobs. It allows people to connect ideas and make mathematical breakthroughs, and it's the essence of what mathematics is. Scientists prove theories by testing lots of cases, but mathematicians propose ideas and use reasons to show that they're mathematically true. We've seen the importance of number flexibility and reasoning talking about math. The third idea we want to show you today is about mathematical connections. It turns out that people who do well in math are those who make connections and see math as a connected subject. People who don't do well are the people who see math as a lot of isolated methods. So we're going to take you on a mathematical tour now to illustrate what we mean by this. Don't worry about following all the math if it's new to you. This isn't to teach you math, it's to show you how it's connected. Try to follow along though, there's some exciting ideas in here. So some fractions are equivalent. Here are three of them. They're called equivalent because they have the same relationship. As you can see, the fractions cover the same area on the same size rectangle. Fractions can also be shown on an xy coordinate graph. This graph shows us the relationship between the numerator and denominator. It also shows us three similar triangles, as you can see. Our journey now takes us to an area of math where shapes transform, where they become bigger, smaller, or when they move position. So we can take our 3, 4 right angle triangle, which we'll draw again here, and dilate it by a scale factor of 2. This means that every side is doubled in length. We multiply each one by 2. That gives us a different triangle, and in fact, it gives us our 6, 8 right angled triangle. We can then take that triangle and perform another times 2 dilation to get our 12, 16 right angled triangle. Or we could have dilated our 3, 4 right triangle by a scale factor of 4, and that would also give us the 12, 16 right angle triangle. We'll show you that. That's part of the fun of transformational geometry. Our triangles and fractions are also connected to the big topic of rate. Rate is a special kind of fraction or ratio where different units are used. For example, you might have miles per hour. When we graph our three points, we can draw a line, and every point on the line has the same relationship or rate, and that rate is always 3 to 4. We're now going to journey into the world of algebra, where we're going to find Mia studying a cheetah. Mia's interested in how far they run, and she finds that this cheetah runs at this rate. So Mia graphs the rate. And you can see, in three minutes, the cheetah runs four miles. In six minutes, they run eight miles. And in 12 minutes, she runs 16 miles. And now she can write an algebraic expression for the rate, y equals 4 thirds x. Hmm, but now she's pondering. Something to think about here and to talk about. Why do you think it's y equals 4 thirds x, and not, for example, y equals 3 over 4x? Something to think about. 
So to find the slope of that line, we can draw another triangle, and that helps us find slope. So there's a cheetah, and some people call this a slope triangle. Another cool thing, our numbers that we chose for you are Pythagorean triples. Pythagoras lived in Greece, and he noticed something really amazing, that when we have a right-angled triangle, here's a picture from Greece, <laughs> the, the areas of the two squares on the two sides of the triangle add up to the area of the square on the hypotenuse, always with any right-angled triangle. Pythagoras' theorem is often expressed as a squared plus b squared equals c squared. And here you can see how that works. The squares on the two sides of the triangle make the same area as the squares on the hypotenuse. So Pythagorean triples are right triangles in which the length of the two sides and the length of the hypotenuse are all whole numbers. So 3, 4, and 5 are called Pythagorean triples. So, in fact, 6, 8, and 10, 12, 16, and 20. So, we've taken you through this mathematical tour to illustrate something. In just a few minutes, we've journeyed from number to geometry to algebra, then back to geometry and number, about eight years of school. But all the ideas we've shown you are linked to one idea, mathematical proportions. So, all of these things are expressing a proportion or a relationship. So here's some of the paths we've traveled in this tour. We've made a little concept map, and it shows you all these areas of mathematics. And when we thought about proportional relationships, we started off with fractions, we made a table, we drew graphs, we then took it into geometry and transformational geometry. We looked at dilation, then we talked about algebra, and we thought about slope. But all of these things are connected to one idea. So math is a subject of beautiful connections. It's not a long list of disconnected topics, even though it may look like that from the books you've had to work through. Never give up looking for mathematical connections. They will really help you. Mathematical connections are really important to the subject and to you. Every four years, the PISA team conducts international surveys and tests to find out how students think about math and how well they achieve in math. In the last survey, they found this. The lowest achieving students were those who used a memorization strategy. When they approached math, the lower achieving students tried to remember lots of methods. When they studied for a test, they tried to memorize methods by heart. The highest achieving students were those who approached math by thinking about big ideas, thinking about what they knew and didn't know, and thinking about how math related to the world. This is a different approach that is more about big ideas and connections. The highest achieving students of all were those who had a growth mindset and used thinking math strategies of thinking about the big ideas and connections. Those students with the most powerful beliefs about themselves and learning and the best math strategies to use were the highest achieving students in the world. And this graph shows you the PISA results from 13 million 15-year-olds in 34 countries.